Hello there, my name is Marcos Montenegro and welcome back to another Data in the Wild episode hosted by Data Meaning. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to the channel below and click the bell to turn on notifications to be the first to know every time we upload a new video. talk today about the user roles in Outlet Scatter. Right now in the screen you are seeing the configuration page of the admin view here in Gallery. In the configuration page you have the, this option user settings where you can set the default role. That means what will be the role associates to a specific user in the first time he enter in the gallery. So what will be the role tied to this user in the first time. Here we have the four main roles that I told you and one more is the no access that's used when you have the gallery being authenticated by SAML or uh, AD groups and you don't want to anyone can enter in the gallery before you send something to them like uh, invitation to the gallery. So. With the no access in the default role, you can avoid people start to use the gallery and you don't know that. The first role that you tell you will be the viewer and we go from there. The viewer role will give to the user the ability to, uh, to see and run workflows in the public gallery or in the districts if you use that option from the gallery but will not be able to, to see anything in private studios and will not be able to see anything by collections. After that, we have the member. Member is another role with a bit more permissions. So member will be able to run uh, workflows in the public gallery, in the districts as well, but will have the ability to run workflows in the private studio and share it with him by collections but will be the only thing he will be able to do because in the member role he will still be uh, not allowed to, to publish workflows and create collections and these things. So his ability will be for run uh, workflows only, nothing more. And now the artisan role will have the same permissions of the member and the viewer but will also be allowed to publish workflows and will be allowed to share workflows in collections in the private studio itself. So it's a role more to developers in your, your company, in your project. And that's the main uh, role I have here, the default role using that specific gallery I'm showing to you right now. After the artisan, we also have the curator and the curator is the last level you have here in the gallery because the curator have all the other permissions and also have the permission to see that uh, admin view here you're seeing and manage all the, the user uh, permissions, manage workflows, schedules and everything you have here in the Alphax gallery. So curator is nothing more uh, as an admin in your environment. But that is for the, the gallery specifically, not to the server machines itself, just for the gallery here. So you can have many curators if you want, and even having that many curators, they not necessarily will have the access to the, to the server machines itself. So just don't, it's not a good practice to you give curator access to, to many users because that maybe can create difficult to you manage some things in the game. But beyond the, the default role here we are seeing, we also can have the ability as curator to change the, the role for a specific user you want. So after the user uh, be inside the gallery with the default role, you can go in that specific user and change his, his role to another one. How we do that? 
here in the admin view you have the users tab here in the left side here you're gonna have the list of all users and their roles you can select one and you're gonna see here he all his data uh, in the gallery so like here you can see you have the role field is default for that specific user and if i want i can change that specific user for a curator role so that way i can change uh, i can manage and change here uh, roles for my users once you change the role you can just press save and that will change the role and taking the opportunity here already in that screen here in the user uh, management side you can see also some actions you can do with that specific user as well and give him uh, some more permissions like so here in that piece you can see you can also give to the user permission to schedule jobs by himself can prioritize jobs so he can decide if one job is more important than others you can give him uh, the ability to assign jobs to specific workers so that way he will be able to to tell him what worker he wants to, to run the, his workflow he will be you can give him also the permission to create collections and to have access to the API the last option you have here is the active is yes here because you also can deactive some users if you want so that way that user will not be allowed to enter in the gallery anymore but one note for that is when you deactivate a user you don't delete them what you did is just deactivate so that user will still be in your database in the mongo database but will just not be allowed to enter in the gallery anymore and that's all for the users management perspective for today if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos please comment below and don't forget to subscribe to know when future videos are posted thanks for watching